Exactly. Chris Weber, your time has come. a little bit. I love you too. Thank you. I want to first thank God for his grace and mercy for allowing me to be here tonight. It is truly an honor. I'd like to thank the Naismith Hall of Fame. I'd like to thank Jerry Carangelo and basketball fans over the world for this wonderful honor. This award for me is not just about a game, a series, or a season. This represents to me the culmination of perseverance, excellence, and consistency. That's why I want to take time and thank those that God put in my life to help me get here. First, my parents, mom and daddy, I love you so much. He's going to keep it short. <laughs> you showed me how to love. You prepared and you protected me. Dad, I watched you come home every day from the factory, the GM, never crying about the what ifs, never crying about anything, taking care of our family. You showed me how to be a man. I thank you and I love you. Mom is the oldest of your five children. I remember at a young age you explaining to me what teamwork and responsibility meant. Because my responsibility was a big one at the time. As the oldest of five, I had to watch the kids and explain to them that even if it was just cooking, they had to shut up and be quiet because mommy, even though you had two jobs, was working on another job, something called a master's. And I remember you being at home, babysitting, typing because you didn't have enough to pay. And I remember getting it done. That's work ethic. I love you. To my brothers, Jeff, Jason, David, my sister, Rachel, I love you guys, my nieces and nephew, Noble, Jordan, Colton, Casey, Laisha. To Detroit, what up, though? What up, though? To my, <laughs> what up, though? <laughs> Ashley, I love you, Charlene, your nephew, thanks you for everything that you've done for him. Pastor Londonwood, Donella Damon, Uncle Leroy Paul, Auntie Maddie Rochelle, and Sweet Mickey, thank you. And to my lady, my baby Erica, my twins, I love you. Thank you for being a wonderful mother to our children. I'd like to tell all of you a story about a lady named Mrs. Stearns. Some may know I have an African-American history collection, and sometimes I take them to schools and I speak about uh, the stories behind the faces. Well, Mrs. Stearns, for me, was a catalyst for my love for history. The first time I fell in love with sports was in her history class. She sparked my love for the history, hypocrisy, the reverence, the absolute power of sport. As class would wind down before class and recess, Mrs. Stearns would wow us with stories from the past. We would beg her to tell us more about the greatest players to ever play. And looking back, she took advantage of it by putting that information that we shared upon test and we'd even celebrate during Black History Month. She spoke of traveling all-star teams and music and food. She told me that we were blessed, that there was a time when, even if we had the obvious talent to compete, there was a gentleman's agreement among the owners that effectively banned blacks from the NBA, NFL, or MLB. She would whisper nightmares about the Klan chasing teams from city to city or recount how it tore at men from the inside, not being able to do what they loved. She encouraged us to know our history. She wanted us to familiarize ourselves with some man named Jackie Robinson. She was proud of this man. She spoke of him with certainty and conviction. And one day after class, she asked me to stay after. I was worried. I thought I was in trouble. And thankfully, that wasn't the case. She spoke kindly and softly and said, I know you get teased a lot, but I see something in you. Everyone does. You have to be like Jackie. You have to be strong. You got to pray. And don't let people get to you. They're going to try to get to you. He was special and you are too. I didn't know why she told me all this. I didn't even play sports at the time. Then later, at the end of our discussion that day, Ms. Stearns 
pulled out a small picture box and opened it. And she showed me a picture inside and explained to me that the man wearing the photo, wearing the baseball hat in the photo, his name was Turkey Stearns. Turkey Stearns was her late husband. He started playing baseball professionally in 1920, retiring in 1942. He played for the Detroit Stars and ended up with the Kansas City Monarchs. He's considered one of the greatest baseball players of all time. He batted over 403 times, led the Negro Leagues in home runs seven times. He has 50 more home runs as the number one hitter than whoever's in second place. To supplement his income, he worked summers, summers in a factory owned by Walter Briggs, owner of the Detroit Tigers, a team that didn't employ blacks. Now, I know this seems like a, a down or, or a baseball story, but to me, this is an, just an example of God's grace in my life. You see, I was being filled with energy of those that had been in the struggle, not just from family and friends, but those in my village. Mrs. Stern saw something in me before I saw it in myself. Her presence and expectations of my life's potential have stayed with me since our conversation in class that day. Not as a burden, but as validation, holding me to a standard. So how could I move forward after having people like that in my life and hearing first-hand accounts of dreams deferred to the past? How could I not think that I must pay it forward or honor those that have paved the way? And so tonight, just a few miles from Boston, how could I not thank the great Bill Russell, Red Arbach? How could I not thank others? Yes, please clap for them. <clears throat> How could I not thank Spencer Haywood or Dr. Harry Edwards, Dr. John Carlos or, or the Big O and many other trailblazers that gave themselves, uh, gave of themselves for us in the next generation. I'd like to thank Temple Christian, my coaches, my teammates there. I'd also like to thank Curtis Hervey, my AAU coach. Harv, the way I approached the game with preparation and toughness, that was you. Mr. Mont, you know I love you. Yapo, Kevin. Uh, Josh Colby, Antonio Raglan, Mike Jackson, Omar Wetlow, I love you guys as well. To the greatest high school coach in Michigan history, my coach, Coach Keenan. Thank you for, thank you for being such a great coach. And Nidra, I thank you for having his back and having our back with all the food, the barbecues, and the honey buns. To the Honorable Dennis Archer and Trudy Archer, thank you for your support and your love and kindness. You helped my transition in high school. I'd like to tell you a story about Isaiah Thomas. He was my guardian angel. Only a few family and friends knew this, but my brothers and I were big fans of Isaiah. We would do everything that Isaiah did. I would even, uh, after I got to the league, say hi, mom, after every interview because he did it. Now you have to flash back. I'm 16 years old, and Zeke calls our house to speak to my parents and ask if he could come over and speak with us. He came over to our little shack on Biltmore, shout out Six Mile, Evergreen, Finkel, Puritan. He came to the hood because I told him he was coming through. Everyone came out and bothered him. He was just cool, patient, and gracious. After speaking to my parents, Isaiah took me aside. You talked, you were kind. You said you understood what I was going through. You told me don't worry. You explain if I needed anything, you'd be there. Financially, mentally, spiritually. You explain that it's about the long run and I had to stay focused. You told me don't start believing the press. You told me keep doing my thing because we are more than hoopers. Zeke, I remember like it was yesterday. You said we. You gave me confidence. You validated my game through setting your expectation. And finally, you protected me from the vultures. You protected me from the vultures. That's why I never had to take a penny from anyone. You found me. You took time out of your life. You took pressure off of me and you planted a seed. And I've helped so many kids only because of your generosity and what you've shown me. Thank you, Isaiah. I love you. <laughs> to the student body, the alumni, and the faculty and the staff at the University of Michigan, I flat out love you. 
It was my pleasure to don the number four jersey of the maize and blue. I loved every moment at the University of Michigan with my teammates, my brothers. First, I'd like to thank Coach Steve Fisher and his wife, Angie. Coach, your calm approach. Mr. Fisher, thank you. Coach, your calm approach, focus, and, and deliberate ways and intense practices allowed us to be ourselves. We could stick to instructions and just let it all hang out. Juwan Howard, Ray Jackson, Jalen Rose, Jimmy King, I love you. All of my former teammates at Michigan, I love you. I can't believe what we accomplished. I'm proud. I'm always asked, what do I think of the Fab Five? And very honestly, I know it was a wild ride, but I stole an email from a friend of mine, Peter Gilbert, from Peter Gilbert. I snuck an email, and I'd just like to read to the fellas what he wrote, and I can't believe he got it. The Fab Five is one of the iconic stories of modern-day sports history. Five young black men who changed the fabric and culture of sport in American society. Five men who changed the game of basketball. Fab Five had a brash audacity in everything they did. They played, they played basketball like a house on fire. It was joyful. The Fab Five.